No, because as I, I'm going to keep saying this, this is a good faith effort to get some things done. People may disagree with the categories, but again, the UFT and the city, the United Federation of Teachers and the city can sit down, come to their own agreement. We set up parameters so that the regions, the Board of Regents may have to institute regulations, and there are components therein that have to be collectively bargained. To compare this to Wisconsin, I think, is not only uh, inappropriate, it's apples and oranges. And by the way, I have great respect for Dennis Hughes and the AFL-CIO. I have great respect for the advocacy he does on behalf of working men and women. I consider myself a principled, strong supporter of the labor movement. And I know some people say, well, how could you be saying that and putting in a bill like this? This, to me, changes the whole dynamic and says that you cannot only have seniority as the sole consideration. And before we even get to that, we put together a whole series of categories that, you know, the people in those categories, most of the teachers who are there now would agree that these folks shouldn't be there. There's, a, for example, there's about 300 people in the category for chronic lateness and absenteeism. I can't even believe that we have to have a discussion about something like that. If a teacher can't get to school and that continues to be a problem, it, to me it's ridiculous that we would have to change a state law to be able to address okay, something like that. I had a couple of conversations with the mayor over the last 10 days. Prior to that, I've had no conversations with him on this subject. Um, people are going to draw the conclusions that they want. I don't think there's any parallel whatsoever. And this is my bill. I didn't have to put this bill in. I did it because I thought it was the right thing to do to advance this whole discussion. And I'll go back. The mayor has stepped out way in front on this. And he's talking about the loss of 6,000 positions, 1,500 through attrition and 4,500 layoffs. Right. I would be shirking my responsibility, as we all would as members of the legislature, if we didn't take a look at that and say, how are we going to fix that? I mean, we've taken a position, and we're not going to tax our way out of this problem, because what we really have is a spending problem and a taxing problem. So we need to take a hard look. And if that means we have to make difficult decisions and change the nature of the debate fundamentally, I believe that that's what is a pu the public is expecting. And you, Liz, you brought up the poll. I didn't bring it up. 85% of the people support this. That... That's somewhat telling. I mean, the governor right now enjoys a 77% approval rating. I thought that was high until I saw the poll. So now, just in closing here, to look ahead to tomorrow, as we yes. mentioned, this bill is coming up to the, for a vote in the Senate Education Committee. You expect that it's possible that it will actually come to the floor for, for a full Senate vote, and do you expect it will pass? Yes, those are my expectations, but this is, uh, this is Albany, so you know, anything, right. anything can happen. That's but a good point. We will be going to committee tomorrow. We'll go to the Rules Committee once it leaves the Education Committee, and my expectation is that we will see this bill on the floor tomorrow. And the governor, of course, has said, uh, just, uh, just recently, actually, last week, said, quote, I think a better system than last in first out, a seniority-based system, is a system based on merit. As far as things moving in the assembly where the teachers' union has been quite strong, do you have right. any update on that? No, uh, John, uh, excuse me, Assemblyman Bing has put in the bill that we have, and he put in the amendments, and, uh, you know, let me quickly add that there are components in this bill that have been changed based on the concerns that have been raised. We made much greater specificity on what the criminal convictions could be for someone's release. We changed the whole dynamic about how teachers would be evaluated and put in a lot more protection so that you can't just throw somebody out the door. We looked at free and reduced lunch programs. We looked at student enrollment with uh, special education, mm -hmm. English language learners. So there's a whole litany of things that we've done even since the discussion started to help make the bill better and I'm not going to apologize for that you know we have taken a strong principal position that ultimately this is supposed to be about the students and the kids in the city of New York and if it transcends beyond that and it has a positive benefit to other communities and parts of this state then I think that's something we should be embracing not criticizing okay senator we will be catching up tomorrow with this issue and we'll see if it actually indeed passes and comes to the floor I want to thank you John Flanagan okay. for joining us tonight thank you